Hey y'all, it's Alexis with Bless Our Littles. Today we're gonna to be chatting about how to prepare yourself for motherhood. So there is so much about motherhood that I was not prepared for. I really thought like just instincts would kick in and I would just know everything, I guess. I was so ultra focused on my labor and my delivery that I never once thought about like preparing or even doing research for postpartum and for motherhood and being a mom and like all of that stuff. So today I want to focus on seven things that you can do to prepare yourself to be a mom. So the very first thing that I recommend all mamas to be to do is catch up on postpartum. Look at the processes, look at what everything is probably going to look like for both if you have a natural birth and if you have a C-section. I think that for me, I was so unprepared for what that would look like. Things like bleeding, like I knew I was going to bleed, but I did not know how much or how long and if this was normal or not normal. Uh, and my legs swelled up like huge, huge, huge. I had this rash called P-U-P-P-P. -P -P. I think that's how many P's it is. Um, but it's this rash all over your body. It's super itchy. I had no idea that these were even possibilities. And I know for some mamas, they also struggle with postpartum depression and with um, postpartum rage or anxiety. And as much as like I would like to say like, you know, those things will never happen to me. Like, I don't know if they would ever happen to me. And so I think going back, I wish I did a little bit more research on that. Now I do have an awesome resource for you to look into. So her name is Carrie and um, she is on Instagram, she also has a website, but she is an RN and she just talks about everything that you would need to know for postpartum. Everything from postpartum rage to breastfeeding and even things like baby reflux. I mean, she's just a great resource and all of her stuff pretty much is free. She does have a couple of courses that you can purchase, but I mean, all her stuff on her Instagram in itself is just amazing. It's been so helpful for me. So I would go and check her out and I'll link that below. So number two is breastfeeding. Learning everything there is to know about breastfeeding, especially if that is your plan. If your plan is to breastfeed, I want you to know it is not easy. It is not something that you just pick up and it just happens. I really thought that was how it was going to be and you need to know a thing or two about it before doing it. I actually watched some videos by Bridget Tyler. I'll go ahead and link her below as well. Uh, she is a birth doula, and so even if you're looking for things for birth, she's an amazing resource for that. Uh, but I watched a few of her videos for uh, the breastfeeding, and I mean, she just talked about different positions and latch and all these things. So I kind of had an idea going into it, but I wish I had maybe watched those videos a few more times prior to giving birth. Uh, just because I think they would have been so helpful. And on top of that, I was in the NICU with my daughter, so there was a lot more obstacles that I was not prepared for. Like, I didn't know, should I be pumping? I had no idea I was supposed to be pumping. You know, I just kind of thought, oh, the milk will be there. I don't know. Like, it was just, I had no idea. Um, the other thing with that is, even if you are planning on breastfeeding, you need to look into the formula things because my daughter was in the NICU and I had no idea that I was gonna have to put her on formula and I knew nothing about it. I have, you know, ultra focused into breastfeeding, breastfeeding, breastfeeding because that's what I wanted and I was determined. But I never knew that there was a possibility that for a few days she might need to be on it. So I just wish I knew a little bit more. So definitely do your research into everything about that. Number three is learn about ways to soothe your baby and just everything there is to know about your little one. I definitely like just this part was instinct. I was like, oh yeah, I'll just get it, I'll just know. And you know, for the most part, my little girl was so easy and it was not hard to soothe her. But in those moments where she was really fussy, and I didn't know what to do. It was because I didn't know what her cues were. I didn't know what they meant. Um, I didn't know what her cries meant. And I wish that I had spent more time learning about those things. Uh, there's something else that I'm just now learning is there's this thing called wake windows and she's gonna have leaps and like, I'm like, what are these things? So get to know all the ins and outs about your baby. Uh, if you're looking for someone um, who does like sleep training or they talk about how to um, 
get your baby to sleep better. Melissa from The Sleep Consultant, I think that's what it is, um, but I'll link that below too. She is an amazing resource for that. I know a lot of people also like taking care of babies. I like her stuff. Um, I have not done her course, but um, I just don't feel like she has as much free resources, and so that's kind of why I liked Melissa a little bit better. Now, number four is plan a date with your husband let's just say a once a week prior to your due date. I wish that we had done this because I went four weeks early and we just never had that last like tonight's the night that we get to just be together and enjoy each other's company. So looking back, I wish I had a date night. So make sure you plan a date night. I'd say once a week. Uh, number five is going to be have conversation with your spouse about all the baby things, all the things that we just talked about, the breastfeeding, postpartum, um, baby just getting fussy, what things you can do. Learn this stuff together so you are working together. That was something that we, we kind of did, but I wish we did more of. I wish we had more conversation about, you know, this is what we do when the baby cries. This is what postpartum is going to look like because I think he would have been more prepared and I would have also been more prepared like just learning together we could have just worked everything out together so anyway that's what I would do have conversations about budget those kinds of things you could do this on your date night if you'd like uh, but I think it's super important to have those conversations with your spouse number six is pray for your postpartum your motherhood journey pray for it all I was so focused on that positive birth story and just praying that God would make that be successful and quick and and all of that that I really lost sight of the motherhood piece of it and I think that it's so important to be praying that we would be a good mom and that he would just help us to to know like how to mother and, and just how to have those instincts and that he would be there through it all and for him to help us to learn how to give ourselves grace and all of these things that that we just we need from him we need him to be able to function properly as a mom so just learning really how to pray for my motherhood journey would have been super helpful number seven last but not least is self-care so i think this one was pretty obvious but that's why i left it for last because self-care okay when i first thought about self-care i was thinking to myself you know oh that means like go get a pedicure plan this plan that like no and I'm learning, no, <laughs> that's not what that meant. I think that there is one thing that you need to do when it comes to self-care, and that's just create yourself a kit. Create yourself a postpartum self-care kit that is all for you. Maybe it's like a special lotion. Maybe it's um, a new bath soap. Maybe it's just, you know, nursing things and snacks and like have all this stuff to pamper yourself because your body is going through so much and it's really nice to just have those things that just make life just like a little bit sweeter. Uh, the other thing that I would highly recommend is grabbing some clothes that you actually like and you fit into. Um, I kind of assumed, which I feel very naive for, but I really assumed that I would just fit into my pre-pregnancy clothes after I gave birth. Um, I thought, oh, my body will pretty much go back to normal. No, it did not, <laughs> not very quickly. Um, and so even still, I am still carrying a bit more weight than I did uh, prior to pregnancy and um, I'm not 100% fitting into all my pre-pregnancy clothes. So there's just something about having some shirts and some pants that like fit and feel good that just make you feel better. So just take care of yourself, take that time for you um, and prepare that prior to having the baby because then once baby comes it's all you're thinking about and that's all that matters um, and so it's just really important to kind of plan that stuff prior to having your little one so yeah that's it that is everything if you had something that helped you get ready for motherhood or something that you wish you did uh, to get ready for motherhood go ahead and comment that below so that's gonna wrap up this video if you have any questions let me know but that's it. So hopefully you guys have a good week and I'll see you next time.